Okay, so I am in Oakland right now in public, so a little awkward. Um, and we're picking up our stuff for the race tomorrow. I'm very excited. Oh my god, oh my god, we got a bus. Oh my god, this feels so real right now. I'm so excited. Okay, oh, here in my mouth. We got the goodies. Um, it's just my bib, a shirt, and I got a free bag, I guess, which is great because I didn't have a bag to begin with. So being around there was really exciting. I'm very excited for the race. I'm kind of nervous and I kind of wish I was doing the marathon now, but that's okay. It's okay. Okay, so it's tasty. It's cold. I gotta stretch and we'll see what happens. I'm Diana for those of you who are new here and I like to make lifestyle videos based on experiences that I've gone through throughout my high school, college, and currently adult life. So if you're interested in those kind of videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button and let's get started. Anyway, as you saw at the beginning of this video, I inserted a little mini half marathon vlog. This is episode three of my strengthening journey. And I did mention in episode two that I was going to be doing a half marathon. This actually started off with me wanting to do a 5K and escalated it to a 10K. Then in my crazy mind, I said, well, let's go ahead and do the whole marathon. But I actually ended up just doing a half marathon because when I signed up for it, I signed up for the half marathon in case I wasn't prepared for the full marathon even though I was training for the full marathon. And then when the day came to like change my registration and stuff like that, I ended up not doing it and missed the deadline. I'm glad I did the half marathon because I still felt a little bit unprepared for the full marathon. And seeing how this was the first time I ever did any kind of race like this, I think that doing the half marathon was a better start than just jumping into the full marathon personally. I did the Oakland marathon, technically the half marathon sponsored by Kaiser, but it is from the Oakland Run. I got a shirt. The shirt says half marathon. And of course, I got a medal. Honestly, I just wanted this medal so bad. It's so pretty. Like, can you see it? 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 And then I got home and I'm like, I don't know where to put this medal. <laughs> so as I was saying, I just wanted to hop on here and give a bit of a quick review. Why did I do that? A bit of a quick review of how the half marathon went, how my training went. I wanted to talk about my workout regime as well as my eating habits. Whoa, sorry. I also wanted to quickly plug in my measurements and stuff like that. If anything changed, just because I know some people genuinely are interested of how much I weigh and if my measurements changed or not. And then finally, my next steps in my strengthening journey. So starting off with the review, I really enjoyed the half marathon. I enjoyed the training because I really like running. I genuinely really like running. Runners, please don't come for me. I'm not an expert, first of all. 
I should have started this off. Oh my god, okay. I forgot to preface this video with I am not an expert, I am not a nutritionist, I am not a fitness coach, what else is it called? I am not a pro professional trainer. I'm not a personal trainer, there we go. I don't have any qualifications for me to be giving any kind of medical, nutritional, and or fitness related advice. This is my experience. But runners, please don't come for me. This is my experience. This is how I went about it. I know it's not completely accurate or correct. I never have ran professionally to begin with. So um, I'm pretty sure I'm not even wearing the right shoes for running. Just saying. Where I left off, running can be very hard on your body. It's something that you definitely have to build up to. If you're not a runner but you want to try something, I would try something smaller like a 5k. Definitely doing something crazy is going straight into a 26 mile marathon is doable. But if you've never ran before, it might be a little bit hard to get used to. Something that I would recommend when running in a race with other people is to stick to your training because the first three or so miles, I was just so pumped up with adrenaline because of like the environment and all of that, that I actually went faster than the pace that I had trained at to the point where I completely passed my pacemaker pace setter the person that was running at this, this pace that i was supposed to go at I forgot what they're called i think they're called pacemakers i completely passed her and i didn't notice until like two miles in when i like was out of breath and my leg was numb so i had to walk for a bit that she passed me and i'm just like when did i pass you <laughs> definitely try not to get too carried away with everything stick at the pace that you train for because if not you're just gonna burn through your energy a lot faster that's what ended up happening to me because i had done the 13 miles and i was training for the full marathon i'm just like i could definitely go faster it's fine i should i could definitely do this but then three miles in my body wasn't used to, to how fast i was going that my left leg fell asleep for like a good mile I, it was just numb. There was a point where like I couldn't even feel myself stepping on the floor because my foot was numb. So that was very concerning. And I realized that I had to walk to alleviate some of the pressure that was building up. And that really set me back. Other than that, I think it, it was so much fun. It was so much fun seeing other people do it. It was so inspiring seeing some people do it because there was this one person who was running with like some sort of kind of stroller and there was four people in that stroller by four people i mean four kids by the way there was four kids on that stroller he was pushing the stroller doing a full marathon and i'm like Whew, that's amazing that's amazing there's people of all ages there's it's just really fun if this is something you you know have been wanting to try i definitely recommend it it is so much fun i had so much fun i started my marathon at nine and i finished in two hours and 31 minutes i had said 34 in the little vlog clip it turns out in my actual times that were recorded in the marathon i actually finished at two minutes and 30 i mean two hours and 31 minutes so it might not be that fast but for me it was the fastest i've done because the ones the one i did before that i finished at 240 and my pace was at 12 uh, 13 minutes and my pace for this one was at 11 minutes so I was just so happy. Throughout the marathon, I also learned that like they gave us water, they gave us snacks, they provide stuff like that. Granted, I wouldn't rely on them to provide something for you. I would still say go prepared. I didn't go fully prepared because I knew I could go the 13 miles without having to drink water because I did it before. And again, runners, please don't come for me. I know that's not healthy. I learned that the hard way. And now that I actually had the, the opportunity to have water and a few like energy like gummies i realized that that's all i needed to be able to continue my marathon training and if i just had that in advance had that while i was training i probably would have been better prepared and probably would have been able to do the full marathon but now i know yeah like i don't know what else to say about it it was so much fun i definitely 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 want to do this again but i want to do a full marathon next at the end i got two free beer i only had one because obviously i'm not going to drink two by myself right after running i gave the other one to my partner it, it felt so empowering especially being able to cross that finish line at mile nine 
after that whole incident learning that you know I'm going too fast for my pace and stuff like that um, I was going pretty steady up until like mile nine where i started to get really really hot there was no longer any kind of shade and i was wearing a long sleeve so i was getting really really hot there was no shade the sun was hitting me directly and i was starting to feel not dehydrated but I, I wasn't feeling so well because of the sun so i ended up having to take my shirt off um, and as soon as i did that and walked a little i hit the three mile mark i, I just had this burst of energy out of nowhere just this adrenaline just goes right through me and i've never had runner's high like i did at that moment it was just like first it, i i don't even know how to explain it it was just this amazing feeling and then at like last mile my playlist was good people around were cheering us up and it was just it was such a good feeling seeing the finish line and then seeing my partner cheering me on from the sidelines i it just i had goosebumps i was getting emotional i sprinted my way down and i finished and oh my god i it was just it's an amazing feeling this video is probably going to be all over the place for me trying to edit this but if there's any takeaway on this review is that it is one of the most amazing things that i've done because it proved to myself that if i commit to something i truly can do it because i started from scratch with absolutely like no kind of help kind of wish i did got, get a little bit of professional help for this but i started from scratch and was able to like build up to this and it was just amazing it was an amazing feeling it was so emotional i did not cry surprisingly but i feel that if i had done the full marathon i would have cried i just wanted to give you all a very genuine review of how i was feeling after the half marathon that's why i wanted to record two days specifically and that's why i also didn't really like plan what i was going to say for this review so i'm very sorry if it's all over the place i just wanted it to be as genuine as possible I'm gonna take this off because it's actually kind of heavy on my neck. Anyway, moving on from the very emotional, very sporadic review. So my workout regimen. This next part's a little bit more structured just so I'm able to explain it to you better. As I mentioned, I started my training in October when I decided officially I'm going to run. That's when I signed up and paid for my registration as well as did my first run to train for this half marathon. I did a two mile run, wanted to see where I was at. <laughs> I was terrible. <laughs> um, I did two miles and I did it in 15 minutes. So I, it was the slowest, wait, my bad. I did one mile in 15 minutes. That's what I meant to say. It's the slowest I've done. And I, it was just really bad. I was really out of shape. I didn't know how to keep a pace or anything like that. So I knew I had to build up to it. So uh, at first I started off running twice a week because I wanted my body to kind of get used to it. I started in October, so I'm just like, I have time, I have till March. Once I realized that I could run five miles without stopping, that's when I started to add mileage every week. November, I increased my running and I started doing running three times a week. Mind you, was it in November? Yeah. Mind you, I was still going to the gym, but I was going to the gym twice a week. At this point, my mindset had gone from gym to running. So I no longer was really focusing on like lifting weights anymore. I really wanted to focus on my running, really wanted to focus on my training. And that's when I gave y'all an update in November as well. I had told you all that I was gonna do the half marathon. So around that time, I had already started training for my um, half marathon. So come along December and holidays come and I'm still running. I think the only days I took off as a break was the holiday i went to vegas that week i also took off from training actually no before i went to vegas i still ran and before the year ended i still ran because i had it in my mind to reach 10 miles before 2022 so i did still run by the start of january i was already at 10 miles non-stop so all of these are non-stop until I reached 14 miles, that's when I had to start taking breaks. In December, I already had to switch having to start running on the weekends because it was getting super, super dark and my run, my long runs were starting to go way past like my time 
where there was daylight outside so I needed to start running on the weekends so in total I was running three days two of those days were more I want to I was calling them speed runs I'm pretty sure there's a proper term for that but that's where I focus on running two miles and try to increase my time or decrease my time in that in this case trying to decrease my time every time that way on my long runs I could just go at a consistent pace and my long runs were not meant to be uh, me trying to beat my time or anything like that. My long runs were me trying to build endurance and trying to build mileage. So I would switch off Monday, Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday and then run Saturdays. Um, every Saturday was my long run. Starting March, I started to taper down and that's when I realized, hey, I'm not gonna do the full marathon. I have not reached the 20 mileage mark like I thought I was going to. Uh, but that's okay because I still got pretty far in my opinion. In March, I was just really focusing on healing rather than increasing and improving just because I needed to prepare myself for race day. Sorry, I was like looking everywhere but the camera. The week leading to race day, so last week, I actually did not do any kind of running. I did not do any kind of workouts. I just dedicated it to rest. So I did active rest days instead. So instead of, you know, actually doing workouts or anything like that, I was just actively moving. I made sure that every single day I did 10,000 steps walks that was just so i can keep active keep moving have my muscles still like you know engaged and stuff like that where i was still actively healing and not losing any of that momentum i built up from january to march i had nothing but running in my workout regime i don't know if that was the correct way to do it or not but that's what i did so i actually ended up canceling my gym subscriptions in january because i felt like we weren't going enough and then we were just paying a lot of money for the gym and we weren't really taking advantage of it and my focus was not the gym anymore my focus was this half marathon that was coming up so i decided to cancel my subscription and once i'm you know ready again to go back to the gym i do that i do want to go back to the gym just not right now and then my nutrition my nutrition actually stayed the same nothing changed absolutely nothing changed i'm eating the same things i'm enjoying the same foods diet did not change whatsoever the only thing that did change was that i stopped counting my calories and i stopped my calorie deficit that i know of so i completely stopped counting my calories by january i already could visually see how much of a portion I needed of like everything basically. I had gotten very used to measuring out my food that I could just visually see it at that point. My diet did definitely did increase during this running um, time because during my long runs, if I did not consume enough calories the day before, that morning I was going to not do so great. So definitely throughout the week, I did notice that I was eating a lot more. I started eating more breakfast. I started to snack, bring a little bit more snacks to work. But it was because my workouts were a lot more extreme, basically. They were a lot more intense. There was a lot of, there was purely cardio. So I definitely needed it. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine with me. I got to eat more which you know is good but from what i'm aware of i was not in a calorie deficit i did stop counting calories so i genuinely don't know if i ever was in a calorie deficit but it didn't feel like it because i definitely was eating a lot more than i was when i was in a calorie deficit however if i was in a calorie deficit or not my health was still good i made sure that i was still pretty healthy for my half marathon so there's that and I forgot to mention, I actually got COVID. Hello. <laughs> hi, hi, part of the COVID group. I was fine, you know, nothing too bad. I was, I had all of my vaccines, the booster shot and everything, and you know, just went to Trader Joe's once and got COVID the next day, <laughs> so. I mean, it, it was just something completely out of my control. During that time, I lost two weeks of training because of that. Just because that week that I did get sick, I was genuinely sick and I did not want to do anything. And the week after, I was just wanting to make sure that I completely recovered and healed before I started running again. Yeah, so that's my nutrition. That's my training. Like I said, diet didn't change. The week leading to race day, I had absolutely no alcohol. Uh, usually, I like to have a little bit of wine when I make 
any kind of pastas or stuff like that but this time around zero alcohol and I wish I could say that I was a lot more conscious about my diet the week leading to the race you know maybe carved up a little ate more protein I don't know just be <laughs> be more act more like conscious about it but honestly I forgot completely that I had my race that weekend so when we did groceries I did not um, account for that that's basically my workout regime and my nutrition ran three times a week with one of those runs being a long run varying between 10 to 15 miles and my diet did not change I just stopped counting calories and I stopped my calorie deficit and was consuming a lot more because I needed more food so moving on to the next part measurements the only reason I want to talk about measurements is because some people actually are interested in my progress uh, this time around weight wise I did not if anything I did decrease a little but I've been fluctuating like I said ever since November because I stopped my calorie deficit I genuinely was not aiming to like lose weight or anything like that anymore so I no longer was like really tracking my weight so it wasn't until this morning that I weighed myself again since January and in January I weighed 145 and today this morning i weigh 146.3 pounds i gained a pound lost a pound i don't know i don't care could have been water weight could have been that i ate wing stop last night and was still bloated from it in the morning i don't know and i don't really care it's fine and so my weight definitely did not change however this is why i don't really care about my weight i mean i don't really care about my measurements either but this is why i feel like I did still lose weight because I actually slimmed down apparently I didn't know <laughs> so my measurements now are on my bust I'm at 37 inches on my waist I'm at 32.5 inches on my hips I'm at 36 inches and on my butt I'm at 39 inches so while I didn't lose actual weight I did trim down a little my waist went down again my hips my butt everything went down again I was not aiming for that but I did notice it again on in my clothes okay I'm sorry if my angle and lighting changed a little i actually got a phone call and as many of you know i record through my iphone i do not have a professional camera to record on so i left off on my measurements so yeah my measurements i did slim down a little again i was doing a very intense cardio training for a run <laughs> so i kind of figured that i was gonna lose some weight although i physically did not lose weight i did trim down lot i feel a lot more i feel like i have a lot less body fat but yeah those are my measurements um like i said i wasn't really you know aiming for anything <laughs> this time around so my next steps i definitely want to do a marathon like i mentioned multiple times already i really want to do a marathon i am thinking of doing the big sur marathon it's another marathon here in california um it's really close to where i live so i'm genuinely thinking of doing big sur if i don't do big sur i might do one in disney there's a disney marathon that they have or another marathon that i said i would sign up with one of my friends to try I was aiming to do one by the end of the year but I don't know if that's gonna happen or not I do want to take a break so if I find any around I want to say November maybe I'll do one but I'd rather save my energy for the one next year so that's something that's not doable this year but I do want to put in my goals for next year to do the Big Sur International Marathon my next goal is to do a marathon however my next episode probably will not be about a marathon right now currently i'm gonna take a break like i said i do have a trip in april so i'm i'm going to have a bit of food missing you know like i'm not gonna work out that much during that time so i'm gonna take a break yeah i mean <laughs> i do want to continue doing the this strengthening journey because I'm doing it more for myself rather than for other people because it's very inspiring for myself to see where I started and how far I've gone. Um, looking back at my November video and talking about me just starting my training and then talking about now, it's just wow, it's a really big accomplishment for me. I feel like not only does this keep me accountable to myself, but 
it's a really nice way to see how much progress I've made and like I said my journey it's like a never-ending journey I there's always things to try there's always things I want to do so yeah we'll see when I release another one of these videos you will all find out sometime in July maybe what I end up doing with my life thank you all so much for watching if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell so you can get notified of when i upload have a beautiful day and i will see y'all next time bye bye